because I look so unhealthy that I'm, I'm I am <laughs> the Walking Dead essentially. That's fantastic. Don't make me laugh. I can't laugh. Okay, don't laugh. We have TSM. <coughs> we got LGB. <coughs> LGB Esports. Yesterday their T side was phenomenal. However, they are kicking things off on the CT side, which may or may not be a blessing for them. We'll see. <coughs> it is a bit of a CT side of the map here on Mirage. Maragi, as we get the push coming in up, connector from T Team Solo mid. They are actually really good at these fast connector pushes. I remember being very impressed and Aspen by them for those. However, they are getting absolutely wrecked. Holly with two quick frags and Carrigan is going to go down as well. And we have ourselves an easily one pistol for LGB. So that is the start that they need. And this should be worrying for TSM. This should be very worrying because if LGB get the ball rolling, I don't know if the ball will stop, James. I think it's going to just crush crush through all Speaking these, of these balls, dames. let's get the photoshops of Dan as Dracula going. Come on. Speaking of balls. Tweet at Face It. Tweet at James Bardolf. Tweet at Follow DDK. Let's do this. I'm... I, I don't know. Okay, so we are on the eco here. I just support this for the record. Team Solo Mid. Do you think there's an irony with the name of this team and like the way mid is played in Counter-Strike? No. 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 Okay. I thought about this before and, and no. No. So this is like a MOBA reference. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you, you you know nothing of MOBA. I've never played a MOBA in my life. I only, I only I've played like thousands of games of Dota and never really touched. Really, so. I only play games that have AWPs in them. So there is AWPs in MOBAs. An a, an actual AWP. No. But you just close enough. There's an AWP in TF2. I have 500 hours in TF2. It's like uh, the, the the actually you know because they uh, did they wait hang on let's just check the money real quick. All right, so yeah, this is uh, this is actually quite interesting here. They they didn't go for a big investment at all with these pistols. There's no armor actually, and nobody's dead for LGB. This is a sick result actually uh, for for LGB actually for their money. Um, so. I'm surprised actually that they didn't just pistol armor up because this would indicate that on the fourth round they're going to want full stock of nades, probably an AWP. But they're, they're like really saving money pretty hardcore at the moment. They didn't get the bomb down in the first round, so very light investment from uh, TSM. So Could I they be going for, well, I was going to say double up, but on the T side, I don't, uh, no, I don't I, see it. Yeah, I don't think they double up, but just, they just want a lot of cash to, to play the nades. So it's very likely they're going to go for a set play. We're going to see them just kind of charging into the A-bomb site, see what they can get done. Two frags, though, for them, which is okay. But I think uh, the previous round, it was a clean, a completely clean round for uh, LGB. So you can see that reflected in their money. It's really, really good. Now there's the AWP. Here is like the super full buy from TSM because they saved so much money. Look at that. It's completely full. If they'd actually gone for pistol armor, what you would see is like an AK armor and like maybe one or two grenades. But you can see right now full stock on everything. AWP as well, but completely full stock. I respect that. Yeah, I like this. That's uh, why I don't like to force on the second round because I like to get the AWPs. Exactly. And, and, and if you have a plan, then that's fantastic as well. And we're seeing that their initial plan is to take middle control. Excellent work here from the AWPer device. He takes two quick frags with the support of his teammates in middle. And they have so many options to play with now. They can either, with this mid-control, turn it into a B play or an A play. It completely depends on how they, how they uh, interpret the situation. But here is Polly coming up with the AWP of his own. Going to take down Cajun B. They wouldn't have expected this. Oh, Carrigan with the jump. He's actually going to force himself to get only tagged by the AWP and not taken out because of that, that mid-air. A connection, so really well done by by him to jump through into the AWPer, and now devices in position. So they're going to give up this round to LGB, and TSM are going to take it. So, who's these man boobs? Excuse me, what? The name of the gun. Oh my god! I'm not going to ask any questions about that one. Let's just leave that there. Okay, so TSM win the first buy round for both teams after losing the pistol, and again, LGB do say that the their T side is uh, their more favoured side, generally speaking, but let's not uh, over-scrutinise the CC side. It may be more than reasonable. We'll have to see. Again, they are playing against very strong competition. LGB, the definitely the underdog team in the league, came through. We, I think we all expected that to, now flip side, to make it, but uh, wasn't to be. And one quick note, actually, is the thing that I'm afraid of for LGB is if they don't have strong connector control, I feel like TSM could actually get loads of rounds. They're going to go for a quick A play at the moment, it would seem. But TSM's ability to 
once they have middle, to bust open connector is really strong. We saw this uh, again at Aspen. They did this very well. And they're going to go in for a super fast play. I love this. All dropping out of the balcony super fast. And LGB didn't have players in position. Both go down immediately who were on the A site. I love this. I am in love with that kind of play on the A, I, A site. And they quickly take over CT spawn as well. Rubino and Zebes rotated through B extremely quickly, though, it must be said. However, they weren't as fast as Team Solo Mids push onto the A bomb site. They do take it with five players, and Device is running around in T spawn. So, he's, oh, he's looking for the save, isn't he? He's looking for the save. He sees the player. Oh, but he manages to escape in timely fashion. Awesome. Unbeknownst to Device, who thinks he's still stuck in the corner. So, he has the angle advantage. The awesome thing about the balcony drop, the palace drop that they did, is that even if, if the CT smoke, smoke it, you can actually just still do that. Because the entire point is just that you, you basically, you, you, uh, as you come out of the doorway, you immediately drop onto the site as immediately as you possibly can. You just drop off the side. And so unless they have somebody in the right position to spray those guys down. Sorry, from Palace you're talking about? From Palace, yeah. Uh, so unless they have someone in position to spray you down, you're on the site immediately, which makes it so much easier for the guys to get up, up slope because the, the CTs who are on the actual site itself are going to be challenged and probably immediately taken down. But even if there's smoke there, you can still do that. So it's really nice. Something you mentioned about, well, actually, I don't think we'll have time as TSM are just charging Did onto the site here. Same thing again from them, more or less. This is looking very powerful here. TSM showing that they really can pack a punch behind some of these rushes. No slow shenanigans from them. It is all a no-nonsense fast play after fast play onto the A site. It's yielding positive result in all these kills. The bomb keeps repeatedly going down from TSM. Just in a two-on-two -two now. Device there with the AWP able to take down one extra frag onto Rain. And now it's all on Jaykem who is making his way forwards. There is the incendiary planted onto the slope. That's going to make his life a little bit easier as he tries to get some good angles here on these players. There it is, that one-on-one, -on -one, but the bomb is ticking faster and faster. Device has surely done more than enough. Indeed, he has. And TSM going to pick up another <coughs> round. Now, James, I put this question to you from like a game theory perspective. Do they just keep doing this? Or do you, because there is, there, there is the, the, the thing that LGB could say, okay, well, we could actually change our setup to, to counter specifically what they've been doing because what they've been doing has been working and hitting a weakness or maybe you know just expecting them to do it again because it's working so well well I, f I feel like and the they are maybe doing that I feel like the CTs would need more bodies on the on the bomb site to try and contest with that they've definitely got only one player to the B bomb site so uh, they they seem to be more than ready for it and now I, I like that that strat from TSM because I feel like the uh, Nades on the A bomb side that every man, woman, and dog does make their pushes very telegraphed. However, they they are not giving them those warning shots with exactly, those grenades. Yeah. So they're just, they're just running straight onto the site, and that in, in itself has significant advantages. And here we go. They are making their way onto the uh, the site here. Zevis is going to go down straight away as TSM roll on him. But heavy losses here as. Getting that bomb down seems to be more of a costly affair than was initially fought for TSM. Two versus four, Device and Dupree left. Two excellent fraggers. Device gets himself, oh, an excellent response with that Tech 9. Good tag there onto a player that's finished off pr uh, quickly by Dupree. Polly, though, going to be gunning him down. Gets a shot in the back with the AWP of Device in a one-on-one -on -one now. It was a two-on-four. Now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Device goes for the peak. He gets the shot with the Tech 9. And oh my goodness, TSM are putting in some really strong rounds here. I really like how they're playing, to be honest, because they're really abusing their individual skill. <coughs> and the immediacy of some of these pushes is, is gorgeous to watch. I think Valve need to significantly reduce the clip size in the Tech 9. Just on a side note, I'm not saying it was uh, massively impactful on, on that match, but it just has too many bullets in the clip, far too many bullets. Ooh, Polly, on fire. Back to a point you said a few rounds ago, with regards to Connector, uh, because of the way LGB are capable of taking it on the T side, I'm sure they are aware of its importance on the CT side. But they are going to get sprayed down so far on all these nades. Gonna get sprayed down on this eco. Yeah, oh. I, I just, I just, I just. The thing is that that balcony play, the palace play, is something that I just absolutely love so much. And you have to ask yourself, like, how can, 
how can um, LGB actually counter that? Like three guys immediately dropping out onto the site. I guess having a guy on stairs is, is really important in, in situations like that. But if there's a flash, all it takes is like half a second for those guys to all just drop down straight away onto the site. And then that, that guy is not going to be able to help the situation anymore. So it's, I don't know, I really like that because some of the problems about these, these set plays that we see is that if the CTs are good enough at counter flashes, if the player on shadow is good enough, then they can't get from T slope onto the, onto the actual bomb site. But we see with this play, they get three players onto the bomb site immediately. So then the t this guys on slope can get there e more easily as well. So, the, and the thing is, is that they haven't even shown all of their repertoire yet. It's like uh, Polly's going to try to challenge before the smoke is going to block him off. And uh, TSM looking like they're going to go for another A play here. They do have two players moving through uh, underpass, looking to get themselves set up in connector. They're cycling players back towards the A slope and palace area. So looking for that three prong, prong, pronged, <laughs> pronged attack play. <laughs> I am a plonker. Talking about plonks. But here we go. Kragan kind of edges way up now as uh, TSM are in connector. Dupree goes down though to Rubino. Cajun B gets the trade. He's applying the pressure. That's going to allow the rest of TSM now to come up the slope to get on through Palace onto the bomb site. And again, it's like clockwork for them. These T rounds are just sublime for the Danes. This is great Counter Strike to watch. This this is Counter Strike. Not that not that that uh, what was it that that little moment which we captured with Shox just jumping up and down with the with the scout when yeah. you when you were like this is Counter Strike. No no no. This is Counter Strike. Indeed, it is, Dan. <coughs> I wonder how many rounds do you think? Do you think that, considering the uh, what we what we think is the strength of LGB's T side, how many rounds do you feel like they need on the CT side versus TSM to be in with a good shout nine. on their own? Nine rounds on the CT side. <laughs> yeah. Or you? I say I would say I would say nine rounds because. TSM are just like super good, like individually. Just, just I mean, a lot of the merit of their play is is how simple it is. It's well constructed, but it's simple, and it re just relies on on how individually skilled they are. Every single player on on TSM, like even Carrigan, I think Carrigan's gotten a bit of a, a bad rap here and there, but Carrigan's a lot better than I, I I think you know than than he's been given credit for, and uh, he's settling into the team well. He, obviously, he's he's a shot caller for the team. But everybody else on that team is, is really good at fragging. Device, Dupree, Zipnix, Cajun B. These guys are sick fraggers. So, uh, LGB have that to contest with. Okay, so Rubino has fallen already on the next buy for LGB, which is going to stretch LGB for this round. It's still a minute on the clock. And they have to be careful because they, they're lacking in information. At the moment, it's just all guesswork as to where the bomb is. Where it might be going, but they're getting indications now. However, the, the uh, flash didn't go there in their favor, and Polly has gone absolutely nuclear here for LGB. Four frags at the very least for him. Jay came with the final one. Nice, nice. Polly, look at that. Look at his. Look at the score. The score there. <laughs> and he is. he's the new addition to their team. Yeah. Obviously, he used to play for Rubino in a, a previous lineup, but he is the newest addition to LGB, and he is going huge for them right now. So he's bringing them closer to that magical nine then. Indeed. So here we go. LGB again have to uh, deal with potentially a bit of an A play. That should be coming in a, at some point here for TSM. They're, they're mixing it up at the moment. Not uh, as much focus on balcony. You can see that. That Rain was uh, concerning himself with that initially. But look at this. They smoked off the site. And they're not concerning themselves with the balcony at all. And they're going to plant in front of the boxes here, towards slope, towards main. They're going to fall back. They're going to let the CTs be on be on the site. That's actually amazing. Yeah, they've got Dupree in the mid as well, so he <coughs> he could pop through connector should he need to later on. And so indeed, that's exactly where he's going now. Really mix up of how to take have these set plays on the site, but now it's all in device, all on in his hands. He's got a peek out. He's on fire, and the flames are going to get him. And the defuse does come in, but it was uh, four players lost there for LGB. It's going to certainly tax them on the monies. So if TSM were to win this round, actually, they probably they should probably they will have the economic advantage at least to be able to take the following rounds left in the first half. 
but we'll have to see how things actually pan out here because LGB going to be flashing over with Rubino into middle to allow his teammate to peek. You can see how he's delaying this a little bit. Um, probably looking for a shot there, but no one to appear yet for TSM into middle. And we have all the Danes rallying up in the B apartments currently looking for a play on to B. There's two men for LGB on the B bomb site, so it's really going to be about how well they are going to place their grenades, how well they their positions are going to work out to uh, defend against this, and how soon they're able to call this for reinforcements to arrive. In go the counter grenades. So good incendiary. Zevas in position to take some excellent kills here. Carrigan goes down, and they are trickling in. Dupree needs to pull out a big result here. He's the only one deep on the bomb site. His teammates are getting in now, and Dupree is getting the frag, as well as Zitnix as the flashes, the distractions. Too much here for LGB as they go down a man. TSM looking strong, but it could all be over here if Rain's flank is good. He gets the bomber. That bomb is not planted. 30 seconds left for them to get that. And it's a one-on-one -on -one now. Cajun B versus Polly. As Polly is looking for the shot there from the kitchen area. Bomb needs to be collected here for Cajun B. So only got 15 seconds left. I do believe it's covered just about as he looks for some scrap of information. There it is. The bomb goes down. Polly. He's got 30 seconds to play with. Well, about 25 seconds to play with before he has got to go, got to go for the DP. He's not a kit, though, that said. And B now going to get the frag. So well played to Cajun B. And we're going to have another round for TSM. And LGB, their money, James, it is gone. Indeed. It is ruined. It is decimated. It is destroyed. <coughs> so Mag7 coming out. JK with a bit of extra money. He's going to... Balance the money out for with the players who have more money on his team. You can see some of them are around 1,400, but most around the 2,500 mark. So he's just going to be on a level with them, and we'll have some toys to play with at the same time. Rain, what are you doing? With a mere pistol, he's taken out two. He's got the bomb. He's got an AK as well. He's got... Dan, everyone's dead. <laughs> They're all dead. Oh, no. It is a massive... It's a massacre. A huge, huge amount of kills coming there for for LGB as they take advantage. Rain and Zevez alone against Dupree. Dupree is certainly got a lot of time in this round, but he's not got a lot of information. Zevez going to find him as he makes all the stepping sounds, and we have seven to six now. So LGB, there you <laughs> go. That's that's what you needed. I was afraid that because of the fact that our economy is so terrible that. TSM would just take the rest of the rounds. But uh, that's not to be the case, thanks to that really immaculate individual performance. And now, LGB can fight back once again. But still, best case for them is 8-7. And that's that's still going to be tough against the likes of TSM. That's a nice well, smoke, dude. actually. That's actually quite a nice one. That's a nice Dan, angle. I went to the well one too many times. Oh, no. You, you got stuck, did you? I did. We got stuck. I think this might be updated today, actually. So we should enjoy it whilst it lasts. Yeah. This this could be we said this last week, but this could be the final time then. Let's have a moment of silence for the uh smoke grenade. Go straight to a flashback. Man, I can't wait till we can hold all and all the nades. All the nades. Me too. Okay, so Dupree is able to play with the AWP at the moment. So let's uh, check out Dupree real quick. They're gonna make their play in and he is gonna be key in finding these openings. So here it is. There is a player behind Little crate there on the site. There's Dupree missing the shot. The teammate going down. Oh, Rain with two quick frags. In comes Jkem from behind. And we have ourselves a tie game, 7-7. Seven to seven. That was a nice angle Dupree was holding on that box. He was expecting a CT. Like uh, Maybe he saw it from a common round, but he was just holding an angle, waiting for the CT to stand up to, shoot, to take his head off. However, Rain was very patient indeed in that position. So LGB not too far away from that ninth round, that magical ninth round that Dan uh, prophesied them needing. Most they can get now is eight, but we'll see if it will be enough should they win it. I just think that, that TSM will have a really strong CG side, but 
Want to see LGB now defending against the A push again. They wanted to go for the fast drop. It was so good in the past, but this time, Rain is feeling himself on fire at the moment with all the kills. And there's the Vice now tapping away, able to take down Zevez. But look at all these players. He's not going to survive the onslaught. And we have an 8 7 half. LGB. LGB um, looking all right. I mean, individually looking pretty good. Eight rounds on CT. Okay, so not guys. Not the best, but. After this match, we'll be having an AMA with James. With DDK James. With James. on Razor Comms. So if you don't have Razor Comms, download the client from Razorzone.com, Razor Comms, and look for the Face It community channel. You can be in there and subject to him to your questions. Or subject James to questions. Yeah, so the group is Facebook. I can barely talk that. I, I will question you. I will relay. Okay, so we are on a pistol round. We've got lots of T's in the underpass area. You can see Polly there. Trying to make it through to site, being tagged from short. Looking for the frags. Oh, he's got burst fire on, and indeed he will shoot and he will find. Two versus three. LGB with a slight disadvantage there. But uh, lots of time on the clock. Still in <coughs> position, <coughs> possession of the bomb as well. <laughs> this is why you're doing the AMA then. <laughs> you're, you're dying. Alright. How long have you got left to live, James? <laughs> me a minute, Stan. Me a minute. Okay. M minutes? I don't, don't die next to me. Can you at least go somewhere else first? That is the worst thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> okay, I mean, seriously. Have some consideration, <coughs> please. Try to, try to do a show here. That's literally the worst thing you've ever said to me in your entire life. <laughs> All right. I just want you to know that I recognize that. But we are in a 2v2. Dupree with the angle. Can he get the kills? Looks like it's uh, proving a bit more difficult than it they'd like it to be. But they've been pretty on point, especially Rain. He's already with three kills. And we have Device and Dupree moving in together now. Two on two. This is going to be a really interesting round. That It's going to set the tone for the next few rounds. And both of these teams want that early advantage. That is uh, a nice nade there onto the jump boxes. But no one's there. Here we go. Got LGB forced in. And oh my god! <laughs> Rain! Just through the smoke. One, two. That's it. And good night. Lights out for TSM in that round. As we do have nine to seven. LGB getting a good start on the tee off. This? James, is it going to happen? Are they going to do this? It's going to happen. It's in their hands. They are entirely capable. They're in the bright place. It's in their hands. Indeed it is. We do have uh, pistols here for TSM. Nothing more than that. No armor. Only pistols. Not investing more than that. Got the B play coming in. And uh, TSM trying to use those 5.7s, but so far oh, not going so well. Le parkour. Le parkour. And in comes LGB though. They're not phased by any fancy jumping around. They're just going to gun down the rest of the players. Um, Do you even need a P90 out. these days no. when you've got a 32 clip tech 9? No. Because it's got better armor, right? It's got the one shot damage. So, <coughs> and it's what, $500? It's a no brainer to me. P90 versus 32 bullet tech 9. I will take the tech 9 every time. Imagine if you could dual wield the tech 9s for $1,000. Wow. Well, that would and, be. And that would be cheap. That and use the mouse a wheel. And mouse fire. Wheel, yes, like a 1.6. I don't know if you could do that in source as well, but you could in 1.6. But Rubino covering the flank there in case the CTs were to push on their eco. LGB though making their way into the B bomb site once again, trying their luck here, moving in as a unit, using these SMGs to their, their f well, just SJ came actually with D90. But to use to full effect here, able to pick up a lot of kills, and they they've been winning these rounds clean. Um, right after Dupree dies here, let's check the money. Let's check the money. We can do it now if you want. Look at that. It's going to be on a really nice cash after this round. Oh my goodness. It's going to be really, really nice for them. Now I think about it. Yes. Valve reduced the... I think they reduced the number of clips that the P250 has. But the, the Tech-9 went unscathed. But wasn't it... It was an accidental nerf, wasn't it? No, it, was, it, it, it <coughs> I hit the P2000 as well. Oh, P2000. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, the Tech-9 is the elephant in the room. It's not even the elephant in the room, Dan. It's the elephant at the dog show. <laughs> I, I still say elephant in the room is more stands out more than elephant at dog show, but I get your point, James. I get your meaning. 
I think that. And I, and I, and I, if I've, you want to I get call, technical I, and nerdy I, about I, it, I, I, call I think <laughs> an elephant at a dog show would have a wider audience than an elephant in a room. Fair point. But I've been calling the Tech Nine out for a long time, so I'm totally with you on that one. Either way, LGB now on the gun round of TSM are going to be able to make a pick and middle. And this is what we've seen from them that's so good about their T rounds is how well they're able to take down middle. And you know what? There's no messing around here. They have the two players up slow. They're going to go straight in here. TSM making something of it, though. They're able to get some good kills coming in, but Polly with the AWP on short. That's going to put quick work of Carrigan as Zipnix comes in from the back. Two quick frags there from Zipnix as Polly, who was the flanking player oh, for look LGB. How he's, he's holding the angle in case he gets smoked off. Oh, they won't smoke him off. Against Device now. Device so close. Oh, he's going to go for the spray. It switches out for the AK. Keeps the spray going. Mows down Polly. And the defuse is going to come into play. And he's going to be able to pick himself up the AWP. So. Ooh, has he got time for this? Oh, this is going to be I don't really think close. he has. I oh, think no, he's going to be know. one second on the clock. Oh, he's done better. Oh, so team. close. Down to a T, my friend. Oh I knew exactly goodness. how much time he'd have left. Oh, my God. That was close. Oh, my God. If he got that, he would have, a, would have had an op as well. But look at the difference that that round is going to play. He's because gone, now from, they have he's to gone from something to nothing, Dan. They have to eco now. This is a disaster. This should be... Oh! Oh, what is that? He's got Big Papa Pump. Device. He's going to go straight in to apartments with Big Papa Pump. Well, he's he's waiting for a flash from a teammate. Where is it, Nick? He's the only one with a flash, so... He's, oh, he's on B, so action. okay. He's not waiting for a flash. He's waiting for some, some bodies to come his way. Let the bodies hit the floor. Is that how it goes? Yeah. Don't, don't, I don't, I don't, don't even don't, know don't what song that is. It's drowning pool. Bodies. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't I do don't that understand chase. it, Dan. That was in every frag movie ever, circa 2000, uh, 2003. Let the bodies hit the floor. Man, I'm so, so old. Here we go. Shotgun not going to prove effective. Could have been a big, big play, though, but uh, they are neutralizing the defense of... TSM on the A-bomb site with these measly pistols. Not much they can do with those. Zipnik's going to go down soon as well. Bomb has been planted. But yeah, man. There, there, there's like ways I can tell what year frag movies were made by which like songs were used in them. <laughs> because, there was, for example, there was a huge huge amount of um, frag movies that used the Matrix movie. Matrix, the Matrix music. Or, for example, Linkin Park. Yeah. Linkin Park is a big one. It's a big one. Oh my god, Linkin Park. OMG. Okay, so 13 to 7. TSM back with another, another buy. Where's our Cajun B at? Where is our Cajun B at? There he is. Over towards the B apps. Gonna go for a deeper angle. And uh, it's a good angle to hold. You have to see uh, if Polly is gonna walk into this one. Polly actually is being quite cautious. He's not being baited into this. He's in fact waiting for an aggressive play from a CT player. But he goes, oh wow, the timing is amazing. Now he moves into it just as the rotation comes in. So that's beautiful there. His teammates providing distraction. That's a huge flanking effort from Polly, but will he actually come into effect here? Because right now the bomb goes down, his teammates are dying, and he's still not, like, Polly is just not having an impact there. Rubino now has to slow them down. He's got to buy time but Polly coming in finally gets in position with the AWP and that bomb is still ticking away you can see that now it's all been a, a cunning ploy to get Polly in that position with the AWP can he now clutch it out looks like he won't he got smoked off and uh, the CTs will make the round theirs 13 to 8 and perhaps if uh, Polly had an AK there that extra mobility could have seen a more interesting it's not often result from that. You see the, <coughs> the guy with the least frags on top of the, le the leaderboard. I suppose because of diffusers and so on, Carrigan up there with eight kills. The team, but he's he's got all the stars, baby. All about the stars. Zevitz planted the bomb without the bomb code in that previous round. I just want to note that he's got hacks. He's hacked the bomb. Oh my god. He's got bomb hacks. All right, Dupree going to take down Zevis. Good uh, positioning there on Shadow. Device looking over towards connector. They don't really have any connector control. Device is basically it, and look how far away he is. He can get smoked off. He can get. He's very exposed 
peeking over like this. Now they know he's there. He, he can't he use can't, that. He position. can't re-peek, can he? Exactly. He can't use that now. It's he's ruined. He's soiled goods. So, so LGB though, the thing is, is that posi their positioning, they, they still don't have... Oh, oh, what is this? J J How did Jacob get there? Cajun B, massive blind spot, holding the communication of TSM. And that's a massive result. Now, that's going to force rotation. Now... It's because device couldn't re-peek. It's, and it's all about LGB, how they call this now. Because they just got an advantage. They've got, look at the position that they have. They've got Connector. They've got a guy in Jungle, a guy in CPL. They have the middle of the map. They can go anywhere they want. And they're slowly pushing in and out. It's the A-bomb site. There's Dupree over by Slope. Ooh, that's a nice kill and a half there from Dupree. Made that two in a row as they do secure the round. TSM. They still aren't going to force an eco from LGB, but they're getting close now. Got to say, it was, it was good, really good play by LGB, and we are aware of uh, how much they, how strong their connector play is. But then the positioning from TSM afterwards to make it nigh on impossible for the bomb to go down, at least on the A bomb site. You know, it was great to see these uh, plays from both teams, exploitation and recovery. Ooh. Indeed. Well, we'll play here from LGB, straight up into the A site. No telegraph moves because there's no nades. So LGB with that stroll into that site, looks like it's going to be an easy plant. TSM in a hell of a, hell of a predicament. A lot of trouble now for them. So it's going to take one through the smoke. Cajun B as well takes one down by short. But the problem is, is that they're really far away. And look how far JKM's in towards uh, the vent area. This is impossible for them to move forward, surely. The next will get the frag, but there's too little time to actually go for this, so they have to back away. Now, James, let's look at the monies. How are TSM doing here? Are they going to be able to afford to buy? Looks like they are fairly broke. Going to get some cash from this, but uh, it's not really... It's not showing anything yet. So we've got we to wait. Okay, well okay. there's cash. Well... I think it was the same actually, but there we go. Two orbs coming out, so they are going to splash the cash down. Splash that cash. They're going shopping at Macy's. They want them a no-load shoes. So this is it. This is the last. This is the last stand for TSM. LGB on 14 rounds. Oh, if it's the All last the stand, then hopefully it won't be as bad as the X-Men film. <laughs> Boom! Shots fired. Okay. Cajun B working on terrain there. He's got himself a good angle on middle. We know that he likes to re-peek. And I think LGB know that as well at this point. He's been re-peeking a lot in middle with that AWP. Let's get out of there though. He's smoked off. Not much more to do there now. Gets away with minimal damage. Done to him. And a frag for his team. So, good result here for TSM to hang on to this. And uh, once again... You can see that the money here is against the ropes for LGB. So LGB, if they win this, it's it's pretty much it's pretty much LGB's map. If they lose this round, TSM have a really strong chance to make a comeback <coughs> because they'll be up against Nico, and uh, that's that should you know put them in good stead to uh, get some momentum going. But it's uh, going to have to take a good defense here on this B site. LGB looking for that play in. It's just Sipnix here that's close at the moment. Oh, we do have another player cycling into Kitchen now. So TSM might have a good defense. That's an immediate kill there onto Carrigan. Zipnix, so much to do. He's only got one kill with the rifle. Switches to the pistol, gets nothing. Three on three now as we have the smokes go down towards the kitchen area. Nate's going in. Cajun B finds the head of Jacob. Cuts it clean off as the bomb goes down. Polly going for the peak behind the flash. Gets eliminated by the vice. Rubino against three players. This is a huge round here for TSM. Rubino gets eliminated. Device coming out huge for his team once again. Cajun being device with that, those orps, man. They save the round. Three players killed for TSM. So it's a costly one, but LGB getting the bomb down. You can see that they're just barely able to <coughs> scrape together a buy thanks to that bomb. And they're going to have a, quite a few nades in there as well. So. That extra 800 bucks, really all the difference for them here. Now having the ability to have loads of nades. Yeah, that was a priceless round for TSM. The double ops continue. Let's have a very quick, a quick look at where they are. You can see Device was just picking a slope, that, that uh, spawn timing peak, to take that angle. But he's going to re-peak it again and again. 
and the other AWP is going to be looking over to mid. Nice flash for his teammates to have a look, but the push is coming in onto the B, sorry, A bomb site from LGB. KGB going to back off, play the range of the AWP, and try and go for the potentially a retake of his teammates as they are pretty much spread out. Apart from. Oh, oh, oh my oh. god, that's hilarious. That is cheeky. And it might just uh, be a clean round here, more or less, with TSM, only losing the pre. Oh my goodness. I can't believe he went for that. He was, I think he was just holding, <coughs> ho like, it was, whilst it's being planting, uh, planted, I think it's holding use for the defuse. Look at that in the demo. That's hilarious. Nice. Attempt. I respect that. Ooh, barely survives with that gun. TSM closing in on LGB here. They're going to have to be very careful with how they choose to use their money, are the Norwegians here. Again, they're just going to continue with one weapon. Some Rec 9s. With those Rec 9s, anything can happen. Indeed, indeed, it can. But they don't have any nays to really throw behind it. They've only got a few. A couple of smokes. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's going to be good enough. They've struggled enough with the B plays when it came to like really full, fully executed rounds. So LGB, I'm not. I'm not. We're not seeing as much of their uh, connector play as we did in yesterday's Mirage match for them. Oh, this is a nice angle. Can they bait out the PK? KGB baited out, but he gets the kill onto Jkem, and that was a good attempt from LGB. They're still going to put someone up through the window though. Might be expected by KGB. I think he's still looking towards the smoke, but he's got to also put his attention on jungle because they're wrapping him and they are going to pick up the weapon. That's an AWP onto Rain. Two on four now. Rain and Rubino left over. They don't really have a way of breaching the site now. Carrigan's emerged onto short because he had the crossfire set up with the player in CT, which was the vice, and there was a player on site as well. So they had a triangle of doom. Should LGB try to retrieve the bomb in that situation? Over. Round has since passed. LGB with the buy again, and you can see how much money is left in the bank. They are two rounds away from taking down TSM here. I really like LGB's logo. It's like a little flame made out of the letters LGB. That's pretty awesome. Maybe it is. So, shout outs to whoever made the uh, design of that logo. We're going to have. Uh, maybe they should do SKDC's logo as well. <laughs> um, TSM now going to be put to the test on the A defense as LGB go in, but look at the counter grenades from the Danes. They're pretty strong actually, able to take down two players and they haven't yet been able to get onto the bomb site. This is the, the typical dilemma. And, uh, what I was talking about by having those two players drop out of balcony immediately, getting onto the, the player that's on the bomb boxes can be really hard sometimes and we saw it right there. The counter grenades doing all the work and TSM one away now from tying it up, and the money is in tatters here for LGB. Going to be buying up some Tech 9s. So they're going to go for the Tech 9 armor plate because they had just barely enough for a proper buy. So they decided, you know what? So saving again. Let's just Tech 9 armor it. And will it be enough here? Fast play, just straight up rush. Can they make this work? Grenade stopping Devers just for a moment. Oh my goodness, the damage is absurd. TSM annihilate the push. <coughs> Look how well drilled they were though, LGB. They had three nades all going in the right places. We had pop flashes off the wall through the window, Molotovs by the van area. Everything doing good. Problem is, if you're just going to non-stop rush into B, it's so telegraphed. The uh, CTs can throw Molotovs in there, as you saw. Pop flashes as well, if there's more than one person there. Then if you cause traffic and you can't see where you're going and you get stuck in, in, the, in the fire, then your teammates are going to get fried like popcorn chicken. I know not. I know not of this. All right, we'll have to, that, that's the conversation for later. <laughs> All right, we're, we have a, an advantage here for device. Uh, sorry, we have we have the advantage here for LGB taking down device. Rain gets challenged. Rain almost looking for that second kill there, almost finding it, but it does get neutralized. Jken to eliminate Zipnix from the round as well, and he might just find one more player. There it is. Dupree gets taken out as well. LGP suddenly, with these individual plays, are looking at a round win. Cajun B's the only man to stop them now, and he's going to drop the bomber. Got to pick that one up, and uh, I think it was picked up indeed. Yeah, it's going to go down. Cajun B, and one on three. 
He's got to assume that he's uh, potentially being flanked here. And of course, we know that's the reality. He's feeling it as well. Look at this. Turns around. What a shot there from Cajun B. Still, though, he's got two more players to find. And that bomb is ticking away. He does have a kit already down to 46 health. Going to go straight in here. No messing around from Cajun B. And uh, looking for those players. And there it is. Gets the next shot. Cajun B. There is still JKM though, as he spins around. Cajun B gets that next shot. Surely he does not have the time. Oh my god, he doesn't. It's so oh. close. What an amazing attempt from Cajun B. That this even though he didn't win that round, that was such so much an heart. insane performance. So much heart in that play. That was really something. That was uh, it, dude, Cajun B is really good. You have to respect that. I mean, I feel like he's been in the shadows sometimes of Device, Dupree, and sometimes Zipnix as well. But you know, in the last month or so, was, uh, month, month and a half, two months, I started to see more and more skill from this man in this uh, in this this uh, new lineup that we have with Carrigan. So it's really good to see that all the players are coming into their own on this side. But LGB, they are on match point now. Can they close it out, or are we going to overtime? Cajun B going to be working on to Poly. So that's uh, really good there to kick things off for Team Solo mid. As Device is looking for a shot of his own. We do have a challenger. Who is it? It's going to be Rain. He's going to go down as well. So TSM closing in on this overtime. Cajun B takes the next shot. JKM gets taken out as well. And this is just horrendous for LGB. The orbs are just picking them apart. Don't have a way to trade onto them, and now it's just, look at this another frag, another one. What is happening? Four kills there for Cajun B, massive. That's seven kills in two rounds. Cajun B, definitely looking great there. So guys, I think this is the first overtime of Face at League actually. So yeah, it is. I think I would remember if we would have had one because we've only had one day of play so far. Man, so tell us the rules in overtime. How does this work? Match rounds five, sixteen thousand. So five rounds each side. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's do this. May the carnage begin. MR5. Okay. In we go now. <coughs> Overtime number one. LGB starting on the T side. Now LGB play. Yeah, they play. I was just about to say they play, they start on their favoured side. We'll see if that offers any advantage. <coughs> Obviously, it's the same side as the previous 15 rounds. They both went 8-7 as well, so of course, to make the overtime. So very even, it would seem, on yep. both sides for both teams. So yeah, as I was saying, they've played the previous 15 rounds, which is ob obviously, well, obvious. But point being that uh, this, while this is LGB favoured side, there is the immediate experience for CSM. Oh, I love that them. angle. Who is that? That is going to be JKM. That's such a cool angle. You don't see that super commonly. But if Cajun B does decide to... Uh, eat, look, he's looking Has for he this. seen it? He oh must no, have no, seen something. They, oh, no. Okay. If they're going to play into his crosshair here, that's going to suck for LGB. But they're aware of this. Cajun B has already shown that he's on those angles as well. So they've got to be really careful. And you can see that they're giving the respect to Cajun B there. But they go, though. And we have one kill coming in from Rain already. Do pre-falls as Rubino is going to plant towards open. Carrigan, though, with a quick frag. Let's get traded on. Madness, chaos, bedlam here as we have TSM rolling in. Then a man down, though. LGB looking quite good at the moment. There's Rain. Does manage to get the spray down onto the device. Now it's on Zipnix as he rolls around. There's three players. He gets completely destroyed as we have the first round of overtime one going to LGB. And as you said, you know, we ex expected flip side tactics to make it through with that line lineup with Blade and World Edit. Bondic, you know, all that, all those guys, um, Mark Loff, but but really, LGB have, have shown that they they really deserve their spot. They Absolutely, cannot really argue with that. They completely deserve to be here. And I'm ex I, I'm I'm excited <coughs> to watch them play always. Oh my goodness, Carrigan gets completely annihilated there on the run to short. The timing super fast, the pace blinding for LGB in this round as they go. Faster and faster in for these plays. TSM trying to respond at the moment, but at the moment, it's a bit of a. They've, they've reached a bit of an impasse here. 
Rain is going to be able, able to eliminate a player on connector, so that's going to even up things. Look at that, see Carrigan, he's like, wow, you put on your Nikes for that one. That timing was super fast. So three versus three. Again, the first team to 21 rounds will take this, guys. So hold on to your seats because we horses. are in for a ride. Hold on to your horses. Hold your horses is a completely different phrase. You do realize that, don't you? <laughs> you know that you're just a troll. Rubino watching out for the flank, putting himself in a more advantageous position. What would it be? They just know. They just know. They need to watch. The shadow gives him away as well before his body turns up. That's going to be an easy frag for Rubino. It's going to force a little bit of a rotation from Cajun B and from Zipnix as well. And the bomb, however, is on the B side. It's down to Cajun B to try and save this. Blunt is going to go down. Polly holding the angle as well. That's going to be two for two so far for LGB. Bit of a chest bump there through the window. Very nice. Yeah. It reminds me of um, at the Face It Land Finals before when we had... I think it was Fnatic, actually. We did like the in in game, did the team huddle, and then like did the the with high the five, with the high five. Yeah, with the it's, hands. In the, it's in the intro. It's super cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess the intro sh it should be on Facecom as well if you guys want to see that. So there we go. Another push coming in from LGB up the slope. A bit of a trade, a uh, few trades coming in here. Uh, Dupree and Zevis going down. LGB not really showing their hand though, although they are. Arriving and connected with rain. It's really nice. Oh, he's going to take the frag onto Carrigan over by short as well. That's going to put a lot of pressure on TSM at the moment. That's going to mean that their B player is going to have to go short now to actually cover that gap that's been made by the excellent play and connected by rain. And of course, the bomb is towards the A bomb site, but that's not something that TSM actually know just yet. Cajun B again with these close range picks with the AWP. It's brave. It takes balls to do that. But KGNB is up for the task. And that's going to equalize things. RGB dropping into the site now. Trying to get that bomb planted. And there it is. Rubino knows exactly the right angles to look here for those kills. Able to defend his planting uh, teammate. And that is going to result in a nice two, uh, three versus two here. Post plant for LGB, but can KGB keep the shenanigans rolling in? He can. That's another frag from him. Zipnix chiming in as well. Jake him now against two players. Finds the first. KGB dropped off the toll booth, and there it is. Jake him connects with the head of Zipnix, and we have ourselves another round for LGB. That's that is three rounds in a row on the T side for them. They are looking really good at the moment, and. Once again, I, I really, really loved how they get players into Connector. It's so, so nice to see how that affects the options for the team. How it distracts, for example, Cajun B, because then it, it means that Cajun B can't so freely be looking towards uh, t towards uh, Palace and, and Slope and out into middle. He's got to concern himself with, with the uh, jungle as well. And, uh, Dupree going to be pushing Apartments Palace in this round to try to make some kind of advantage go the way of TSM, but LGB in response here, they're mad, look at the spray on the range, that's ridiculous there from Rain, taking down two players, Zipnix coming in now, he's got a two on three to worry about, as uh, Jacob's up on the palace there, just dropping down to a safer, less exposed position in shadow, Zipnix got to first find himself, find himself through connector, he will actually do that, taking down Zeves, Oh, that nade might just be fantastic. Takes Zipnix down. A big chunk of health there. 18 left on him. It's all down to Polly now. As Zipnix looks to be going potentially for a bit of a hold here. Oh, my God. He's... Oh, no, no, no. Surely not. Surely not. Oh, my God. He holds with no kit. How on earth did Polly let that happen? That is absurd. That is so brave. Okay, holds with a kit. All right. That's standard. Holds with no kit. That takes balls. Ironclad balls. So here we go. TSM now picking up a round. A very much needed round as LGB was starting to really trounce their defense. Going in for an aggressive middle push. And so far, it, far it's uh, being deflected, but not without its own losses for LGB. Rain deciding that, you know what, they're pushing middle. The A defense has got to be weak here. Takes his chances, able to take down a quick entry. And now he's got position there. He's going to be actually removed by Cajun B, which is definitely going to help the defense of TSM as they rotate here. But the bomb is, meanwhile, being ferried all the way around to B. So this is looking really smart. Really good snap call there from LGB, but they're slowing the pace at the moment. 
to try not to give away any sound cues. But this three on three is really anybody's game at the moment. It's all going to come down to how well TSM can hold LGB as they jump in initially. Cajun B's the man. And he's going to get taken down immediately. Looks like Zipnix was in quickly as well, but could just be the fourth round there on the T side. And it will be. LGB, four rounds on the T side. It could very well have been... F in fact, it really should have been five. That's, that's huge. Hi, James. Hello. What is up, my friend? How are you doing? Are you, oh, are you dying? Excuse me. I'm still, I'm still dying, yes. Still on the brink it's, of uh, death. Yeah, it's not going well for me over here. <coughs> so, again, LGB only required two rounds on their CT side here to take this match. 21 to the X of whatever to solo mid would finish up with in that situation. But TSM not out of this by any means. They do, however, need to win at least four of these five rounds to tie things up 2020. <coughs> so, they are not in a great situation at the moment. And it gets a little bit worse as the first frag goes in favor of LGB towards the A side. The bomb, however, is over to B. So I think this could be a fake here from TSM. However, how many teammates will it cost them? They there are four players over to the A bomb site, especially for these guys. It's going to be a long rotation, but there's still no push. They're not moving an inch at the moment. How long is it going to be until LGB start to put extra bodies back towards the B bomb site? Are they just going to entirely rely on Zeves peeking here? There's still no movement there. Just a little bit now. Rainy rain, sorry, going into. Actually, I was going to say more passive position, but indeed, he is heading straight over to the B-bomb site, and the call is going to come in from Zeves now as the whole push comes in. Finally gets his rifle out. Two frags, bomb is down. That's going to be a full rotation from the CTs, but Device with 11 HP is all that's left, and he'll get soon cleaned up by Polly. That was sick from Zeves. That man deserves a round of applause. That was an excellent hold. His nades were really good, and he pulled out the, the rifle very calmly picking off players. He's alone there, but so calm under the pressure, so considered. So, so good. Maintaining his equanimity there. I doubt anyone on the stream knows what that word means. I learned that word from tasteless. So what is artosis. it? Artosis. Very it means, com it means composure. Okay. Um, I, watched that, I learned that from watching GOM TV in 2008. But here we go. Polly able to take down the device straight away. And it's definitely a good start here for, for them. But... Uh, Gonna get the equalizing frag in quickly. Look at that forward smoke. That's gonna allow TSM to take connector aggressively, and that's really, really nice. Again, they can just go for the straight up push. Looks like they want to do that. They've got so many bodies in there. Gonna be moving through Dupree, taking down JCAM immediately as they get themselves onto the bomb site. Dupree, look at that. So aggressive, moving all the way through. Again, finding these quick shots for the AWP. And Rubino coming in from the back of the site. They didn't clear it quickly enough. Dupree gonna be taking him down. And Dupree, already with three kills with this AWP in this round. Is he going to make it number four? Zeves, with a fantastic round previously, could just win it right here, right now, for LGB. Carrigan's on half health. Dupree's on three. Everything to do now here for the man Zeves. But Dupree gets himself his fourth kill with the AWP and, and single-handedly saves TSM's chances in this, uh, in this, ra in this match. Massive round there for TSM, but every round needs to be massive. Again, they drop a single round and they are donezo with this match until the next play day. So, we're going to see an AWP on both teams. Once again, Polly is going to be rocking his one in mid. Meanwhile, Device is going to be in A apps at the moment. But there is a significant uh, presence from the T's towards the B bomb site, and Dupree will take down Rubino. So, with one minute and a half on the clock, LGB are already at a one man disadvantage. You can see device. It's going to take down Rain as well. So we seem to be heading towards 2018, although Zebes has other ideas. As he will hold on to the B bomb site for the time being. But with all of one HP, he really needs to consider his position. Even a flashbang could kill him now. And they're slowing things down. This is smart from TSM. They've got a bunch of time to work with. A minute left. So they can really set up for something smart. And have to rush themselves at the moment. And Zebes is on one HP. So that's, that sucks for Zebes, at least. And... Uh, He's he's can't really effectively be relied upon to defend anything by himself, so he's you know, backing away a little bit. They know what's going on. They're actually seeing that uh, 
that there is a lack of presence towards B at the moment for uh, TSM. And here they go now, making their way in. And there's a good opening. Device again, finding himself, finding his team ways into the bomb sites. LGB now, two players. One of them has one HP. Dupree. Dupree's in the killer position. He's in the game over position right now, but he's looking the wrong way. However, one versus four. I really don't have high hopes for Jake here. Let's look at the, mo let's look at the money on the team as well. They will be able to buy for the next round. Oh, gets the follow up, but he should be falling soon. No, he takes down Dupree as well. <coughs> looking at the cash though, actually things looking a little bit uh, ropier. May come into play a bit later on. But nice for now, Jake will save versus two. Ooh, that's a nice nade. Now we just need one round. Just one round. There's two left now. TSM really playing with fire because honestly, if it wasn't for device connecting all of these shots on the entries, punching the holes through onto the defense of those bomb sites, at the moment TSM wouldn't have their chances. So how long can they rely on device to be that man to save them? How long can he be relied upon to create these openings? Well, slow around here. We do have TSM. So, you know, I was going to say loitering, but I, I feel like that's become your word now. It's a word in the English dictionary, Dan. But it, it's, it's your thing, though. People loiter. They're idling. This is London. There's people loitering everywhere, Dan. <laughs> They're idling around, around the A slope area, looking for the grenades here to set up. Now, LGB have four players towards A at the moment, so they will be able to have the bodies in place. But if the nades are fantastic and the counter flashes aren't quite good enough, TSM will make a clean entry. Although, Polly already in with one, taking down Dupree. Device gets the trade, though. Zipnix, key position, taking down the players on the bomb site. That should allow TSM to go in closer, but it's a two on three for them. LGB in advantage here. And again, just one round, and they can take this map. JKM close to the bomb boxes. And again, he finds a quick frag. It's all on Cajun B right here in this moment. Can he survive against three players? He takes down Zevers quickly. The fire proving problematic, and he gets eliminated by Rubino. And there you go, 21 to 18, final score. LGB with a really awesome game. Really awesome game from them. And TSM also showing...